It sounds as though I am not Army's, hearing anything. Yeah, Army's mic was. All right. There. Well, what a start to the day. What a start. We had this whole plan, but we'll switch right to it. I got to tell you about last night. <laughs> I, I, you hear us now, Army? I had you the whole time. I don't know. I, my thing was on mute. That was on me. I, I clicked All mute right. before the intro started. I didn't unmute myself. So episode 21, Chicklets Game Notes. The Merman's there. Colby Armstrong right here. The old Arm Zempic <laughs> is in the house. The chat was buzzing before we came on, Merle. Sorry, my mic was muted. Amateur move. We might have a Mindsies right off the bat. Mindsies. Absolutely. Mindsies. 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 You've been busy. You've been yeah. busy as hell. I've been following you everywhere right now. Your boots on the ground in the U.S. and you just don't stop, baby. Oh. You're rolling. First first up was our guy, IceCon. What a show that was on. By now, you've probably heard all about it from Wits different shows. But what a spectacle that was. It, this was. This was unbelievable. What a meetup before DraftKings. The game was right there. Like it was a perfect game if we could have got that one more empty net goal, but it was electric. Fans were great. Lost all our money, but we had a hell of a time. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome following you guys around and like just keeping up with the content. And Dave was there and how the you know what? How the coyotes like rolled out the red carpet for you guys too and like embraced it with the boys on the ice shooting for the puck. I was following your you're taking videos of it, documenting all the shooting mm -hmm. for the in the middle thing. Of course, we sucked at it, no one got it. Yeah. Um, and then and then all like everything at the game, a pizza review on the Jumbotron with Biz with a dead coyote on his head. I mean, it was it was pretty electric how they took you guys completely in from, um, you know, at the DraftKings bar to the game with the bus rides and everything. That was a that was like more than I thought it was going to be. So shout out to Elio. Unbelievable mm -hmm. what he did. Yeah, it was. It's all like his community. I remember. I think it was on one of the shows I was on. Somebody like brought it up. Like, hey, like in the chat, we need to all meet up. We need to all meet up and watch a game. And it just exploded. It went nuts. And then when Dave gets involved, it just gets even bigger and better. And yeah, it was an amazing weekend. The only thing I didn't get to do was check out Business House out in Arizona. Somehow with that we were supposed to go check that out. So that's we got to get back there somehow. So is it still under construction? What's yeah, going on? He's with still that? not living there, but he said it's almost mm -hmm. done. He wanted to bring us out there. We didn't get to see it. I want to see it too. I've seen a couple yeah. pictures of it. He's doing a bang up job on that place. It's just yeah. I feel like it's been how long has it been? Years. Yeah. I'm getting in the chat right now. Hello, yeah. chat. Love you. Good yeah. to see you. Amazingly on fire when I came in muted. And I like what a way to start a show. Just I'm um, muted. Has that been? I done thought before? it was mine. So I wasn't saying anything because <laughs> I thought I was screwed up. I, I had so. a hell of it open too. It was electric. It's too bad I'm the only person that heard it. But uh, I got people in the chat, Laura, and I saw this Matt Nolan in there. They're calling me Mute Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Get a new name every week. The Mute Dog. Unbelievable. Yep. I love it. I love it. I love the chat. You know I love the chat. Chat yeah. runs the show. Chat's unbelievable, Merles. Yeah, um, I was in I'm the working. chat. I, 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 I was in there. Yeah, I say NCAA owns the day today. It does. It does. It's big time right now. We got college hoops that have kind of owned Barstool, but as far as we go, we're we're running hot, hot on NCAA hockey and the tournaments that are on right now and the race to the Frozen Four, which we're super pumped about to go to, by the way. That's coming up as well as we keep track of these teams, Merle's G. Was G there too? We had boots on the ground at some of these games the other day. Boots on the ground at these yeah. games. Let's go, boys. I was not, but Merle, I, I'd love to hear about your entire experience in, in yeah. Springfield yesterday. The ice looked like shit. Uh, Maine, they let us down. They didn't, they, they, they fell short, but still a very successful season, but would love to hear your overall thoughts on the, on the whole experience. Yeah. So I was all set up to go to the main game, which was at five 30, an hour and a half from here, all set up. I got all these master plans all of a sudden around, I think it was around like 10 AM. A couple of my buddies are like, screw this. We're going over early. We don't, we'll do work another time. And I'm like, Oh, like I can't miss out on this. So I, you know, I, I, I work some things around the wife's like, yeah, go for it. Like, why not? It's only, it's right there. You got to go for it. So we jumped in the car quickly, got over there. And that turned out to be the best game. It was UMass versus Denver. We got in there. That game was just awesome. Back and forth, back and forth. UMass dominated the whole thing. They were dominating. 
over with the upset in the in the beginning, but it's like they had to fly cross country. It was the early game, so the games originally they're thinking it's like eleven a.m. for them. Yeah, the UMass faithful probably traveled pretty well. It's yeah. a twenty drive from UMass. What a battle that was, Merles. Yeah, and Denver was missing their top scorer there, Massimino or some kid named like Rizzo. Italian yeah, guy. he's sick. Rizzo. So it like it was just screaming UMass. I took them plus one and a half, which. I thought it was the easiest thing on the board. And I also loved the under because if you remember, if you watch the Czech team in World Juniors, that's who UMass's goalie is. He's a big giant. Knew how, he played in those big games over there. You knew he was going to be ready for the big game. But UMass all over them. They got a power play in the second overtime. And you knew if they didn't score, that was it. it and it, that's what happens every time in hockey. You, don't, you get the power play. Denver came down one chance. This kid on Denver, I sent it to our group. Forget his name now. Number seven. Divine. 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 Yep. Jack Divine. He's filthy. Filthy. He was awesome. Great player. What'd you say he was too? Like he's like a seventh round pick to the Panthers and he's like, yeah. a, he's a gamer. He was a gamer. He was, he was the only guy I really noticed on Denver and UMass had a bunch of chances and they were buzzing. Denver goalie was, I think he was cramping up because of all the ice time and all the travel. And it just, it was screaming <laughs> UMass, but that's hockey. You throw one at the net, smart shot at the net. There's a little bumping on the goalie, but it counted. So both yeah, goalies I saw Raycroft. Raycroft at the intermission was just saying, just throw one at the net. Like that's one of those games. Like no one took chances. It was pretty safe. And I remember I was texting the group. I had to go work the Pens game last night. And that thing was like humming through the first OT. And I was like, oh no, like I want to watch this. I was sitting there watching. I got my brother in town. We were watching. Our kids were watching. It was great. And I had to, I had to beat a lot of there. So I, I missed the overtime winner, but um, amazing that you were there for that, Merle's just seeing this right now. Yeah. The theater of NCAA tournament hockey is unbelievable. And, you know, G, you've been on it. You've been on it doing Chicklets You and following and keeping updates on it as well. So I think we're in for an awesome tournament season right now, leading right to Frozen Four. There's games today all day as well, which I love how they do that, by the way. And what we about only game have one. Two what about game one two NHL yesterday? game? Yeah. So, of course, it got all screwed up with the double overtime. All those players were there on time, you know, Maine and Cornell. They get there. So, all their stuff was kind of thrown off. Benny Barr, our guy, I'm in the main section. I got his parents behind me. Boom. You got the they shirt score. on. Got the shirt on. The, the you know the guy lives rent free in my house for ten years. He gives me a ten dollar golf shirt, but that's for another time. <laughs> but everybody was pumped. I had the main stuff on. I met a ton of Chicklets fans and Game Notes fans. It was really a fun event, and they scored right away. One nothing. Like this, let's go, let's go. We get the next one. This thing's over. Maine again gets a five minute major, doesn't score, and you just knew it. Like they didn't put him away. Some poor kid made a horrendous turnover on the first goal. I don't know if you saw that. All he, they were kind of under distress. He should have just chipped it out. Of course, that ends up in their net. And then this Cornell team, they it, it's the same act for 25 years since I played against them. All he, he recruits these absolute giants. They're huge. They're huge. huge. Merles, I was watching the game, and I'm like, I've watched a good amount of main hockey this year. I'm like, are they smaller than I thought? Like, is this team just tiny? And then I'm like, wait, let me look up Cornell's roster. They are fucking huge. Yep. They're like the they're, Winnipeg they're, Jets of college hockey. They're just monsters. And he, and he has them holding and hooking and grabbing all game long where it gets in the ref's head that it's just normal. Like the hockey, they it, it, it turned into 1990s hockey clutching and grabbing because the ref wouldn't call anything because he – all you do is see everybody doing it. So I think you're like, oh, I, I guess it's okay. I can't call every penalty. And they just slowed them down. All they were doing was holding the dough the whole game, just slowing him down, clutching, grabbing. One point, Maine starts putting on the pressure. All of a sudden, the goalie's pulling his glove off. You see the trainer. He took 15 minutes to walk out to the goalie, pulls his hand off. All, all Cornell, same <laughs> act as when I played because they're big. They get tired faster. They have to slow the game down. All of a sudden, it's 2-1. You're done. You can't beat Cornell if they're ahead. They are the best team in the world at just killing the clock. Logging it up. And, I mean, they had three chances, and they scored all three. So, credit to them. They did score. And, and the goalie was great for Cornell, too. Small guy, Shane. Great goalie there, too. 
So yeah, he won loss. the uh, Mike Richter award, I believe, for goalie of the oh. uh, goalie of the year in college yeah. hockey this year. It's yeah, so funny too. Year. It's so funny too because I was just I was following on social as I was working, and I just seen Merle's going <laughs> going nuts with like three <laughs> tweets in a row about the refing and how the clutching and grabbing. I could just <laughs> I was, was saying it. I was saying it. And I was reading it like you would say it in my head, and I was dying because I know you're just going crazy with your main shirt on. Benny bars our guy, obviously. I want Benny to be at the Frozen Four. That would have been unreal. One mm. for us, two for him, well, and like what he's done like, there. It seemed like across the board, though, yesterday, like the refs kind of put their whistles away. Like I, I don't know if that was something coming down from the top where they're like, "Hey, like let's not jump in. Like let's let these kids play." Because I thought in all four games, like they really weren't calling too too much. Yeah, I mean, that, that's how it should be. But it's just like, that's Cornell. I, it was driving me nuts because it's the same way they played against me. They always beat me. So I'm still bitter about that. And um, it just like that first game, though, was so much better because both teams were just flying. It was wide open. And then Cornell did Cornell holding, slowing it down, just made it an ugly mucker game. And But that's what they do. And credit them. It's going to be an interesting game, Denver versus them. I, I, I won't have a pick on that game. It's a complete toss-up. Apparently, I was wrong about Sorry. him being the Mike Richter award winner. So, okay, that was a, a sick might, move, though, to throw him out there. Give him one. some credit. That's good, though. G, I like that. I like that. I like that yes, we did that. I muted myself at the start of the show. We're checking out false awards. We don't care. Yes. We're we're the game notes. We we sometimes mm -hmm. we check them. Sometimes we don't. Then you learn. You get your eyes welded shut. Exactly. Absolutely welded. And I love it. I love it. We're like the Rempy eye welding mm -hmm. shut podcast of the hockey world. That's so, we, that's so perfect. But. What are you, Were you guys team? able to watch the other yeah. games, the BU versus RIT and Minnesota versus Omaha? I watched a little no, bit. I but... saw BU. I saw them score early first, like sick dangle goal in front, uh, and just p unreal. It's just like they're picking up, picking them apart. So I was like, "Oh, this one's over. This one." Yeah, is it over. took them a bit to get going. I yeah. think RIT is one of those teams. They're the oldest team in the NCAA. I think at like twenty three years and two months. So that's a pretty old group of guys. And BU is one of the youngest teams in the NCAA. So I think there's always a bit of worry when those old teams come in, the, the grown men, and they're going up against those 18, 19-year-olds. You can always get an upset in the tournament somewhere with one of those uh, matchups. But, uh, yeah, B, BU is just too talented. They ended up turning around. Celebrini had a sick goal as well. Um, but, yeah, they're loaded. And that Minnesota-Omaha game as well, that was a battle. Omaha, team of destiny. Uh, they beat North Dakota in the NCHGs. I've... I, I love them all season, but just it's too Minnesota was just too tough to get by Jimmy Snuggerud and in the Minnesota Ooh, yeah. Gophers. Yeah. So now it what it's B versus Minnesota, right? Big matchup tomorrow. BU versus Minnesota. Yeah, this is all happening so fast. I feel like it's just hot and heavy with games right now, which is which is electric. Four games today, too. Do we want to talk about G or uh Chicklets U North Dakota episode as well? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was. I, don't know I feel you... like that popped, man. That just hit the hit the hit the line. It was on the line, and everyone just started like taking it in. I feel like every episode has gotten better and better too. I don't know why. Like I just feel like it's just like the way you did it with the rinks you went to. They're all great and all cool, but like, and then now it just got to North Dakota. Like, is there coming any coming back from that? From what we just saw in there? Because my mind was kind of blown when I saw that. I was like, you were at like a NASA center. <laughs> yeah, we have some in the works. It's kind of tough right now, though, because, you know, the no one really wants to do a locker room tour right now with the tournament going on and they're all on the yeah. road. So it'd be tough. It'd have to be something postseason. But yeah, North Dakota was crazy. It was just uh, it's it's as pro as you can get. Right. Like the zero gravity beds, the high altitude room, the red light therapy, cryo chambers. It's just uh, it was awesome. And we actually got the chance to talk to I sat down with Coach Brad Berry. Um, and we had a nice 15 minute interview. I don't know if you guys want me to play that right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like I'm interested to see it because it. they do play today. So maybe I hear something that helps with my picks for tonight. All right, Let's coach. Go. So tell me like, how do you, how do you sell kids on Grand Forks, North Dakota? Grand Forks, North Dakota and North Dakota hockey. Um, well, this is a place where you want to win championships and you want to develop as a player to get to the NHL. Um, whether you're a draft pick, whether you're a free agent, um, it's an opportunity to play at a high level of college hockey in the NCHC and a chance to uh, develop with other really good players here. And, uh, 
you know, everybody goes, how do you get a kid to Grand Forks, North Dakota? Well, look, number one, obviously you look at the facility, the Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, we're very Easy. blessed and grateful and fortunate to have this here, right? Every day we come in and we pinch ourselves that we get to be a part of this, right? Um, the other thing is, is um, you know, we feel like we're like the Green Bay Packers of uh, college hockey. Um, you know, when you come to Grand Forks, uh, you're going to school, getting a great degree, and you're get to play on an unbelievable hockey team to vie for a national championship. And, uh, you know, those are two things that you do here. And like in Green Bay, Wisconsin, that's what they do there in the NFL is they, they play football and, and uh, try to win championships. I just found out that you can get a commercial aviation degree like this guy over here here at North Dakota. I didn't know that. Interesting school. Well, we're very proud of him. Um, oh, yeah? yeah? Well, we are. Not, well, not only for his prowess on the, on the rink, being a, a really good hockey player and a leader on our team, but also uh, being our first aviation student to be a commercial pilot. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort and time management to, uh, to get through as a normal student in the aviation program. But to do that and be a Division I hockey player, it, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, he's a dialed in young man and he's going to have a great future in hockey. But uh, absolutely for sure in, uh, in a being a commercial pilot. pilot. So tell me about like just like the recruiting process as a whole. Like h how do you, where, where are you looking? Is there a certain area of the country that you look in particular? Like what, what are you looking for in a player that you are recruiting? Is it the competitive aspect? Is it a team guy? Yeah. Is it? So if you would ask me 10, 15 years ago, it's probably more regional. Yeah. Uh, but now it really isn't, um, you know, aware of in North America. Uh, internationally, usually the international players come here and play first in, in a junior league uh, before we, uh, uh, you know, look at them or try to recruit them. But to me, you know, the things that we look for, you know, when you talk about it, is character. You know, like, like obviously, you have to have all the God-given hockey ability at a high-end level, elite level. But character is a huge thing, and uh, competes a huge thing, and being team first is a huge thing. Um, so again, like you know, we have a lot of skilled players here. But we love hard skill. We, we love guys that can make plays at a high, high level, but we want guys that have high, high compete here that, that are ultra competitive. And uh, I think that's why we've had a lot of success is because we've had skill, but we've had hard skill. What are your thoughts on the transfer portal? Is that something you guys utilize here? Are you a fan of it? Well, it's, it, it's here to stay. Yeah. And it's part of the everyday side of it right now. And, and I guess I, 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 I'm not a... I guess a huge advocate of it, but it has helped us, you know, uh, over the last few years. Uh, each year we presents a different opportunity. This year we had to go into it quite a bit because we had guys sign NHL contracts, we had guys exhaust eligibility, and we had a couple guys that transfer. So we needed we needed uh, you know some players coming through us through to our program, and we couldn't bring in 14 freshmen. So we had to bring in some transfers, and, and they've helped our group. You know, the, the freshmen have been outstanding, but the transfers have really helped us too as far as leadership, guys that had experience playing college hockey already. You know, there's some years we take one or two transfers. Sometimes we don't take any, but at the end of the day, each year presents a different opportunity and what that looks like. How, how much are you helping kids too with, um, you know, hey, like, you're, you don't have a spot on this team next year. I know you've been here a year or two, but there's just not a position on a team you should look to transfer. Or is it more they kind of see the writing on the wall, like, look, I, I don't make, I don't fit on this team anymore. It's probably time for me to go. Yeah, well, I think there's a little bit of give and take there. But it all starts with communication. And it doesn't really, you know, uh, start at the end of the year. I think it's situations that, that go through the year and, and you see where that opportunity lies and, I think it's a situation where, you know, we're trying to do the best for both, right? Yeah. For, for, the, for the student athlete and the program. And sometimes it's, you know what, hey, you know, hunker in, dig in here. You know what, there's going to be opportunity. You're going to, you got to just get through the grind here. And, or there might be a situation where, you know, that player goes, well, I, I don't really see the light of day. I, I think I want to go uh, try to have a fresh start somewhere else. And, and we're open to that too, you know. Yeah. So, again, like I said, it, I think each and every uh, situation presents a different um, opportunity and I think we uh, we do a good job of communicating. NIL money, is that something that you guys, I mean, I, I, with Ralph Engelstadt, you know, you have the Ralph Engelstadt Foundation that you, I, I feel like you guys kind of just have like an endless pit of money. I don't know if you guys can use that for recruiting, but like how is how is NIL factoring into recruiting? Our kids, I've, I've heard that. Oh. So here we have. What is your favorite part of this arena? Come into the rink every day at 6 a.m. <laughs> I, you know, some of these guys probably beat me to the rink having breakfast here and getting ready for the day. But, uh, you know, like I said, I drive down uh, University Avenue and I get here at 6 a.m. And, you know, it's dark out and the parking lot's empty. And, uh, 
and you got to pinch yourself that I, I get I get to I don't have to I get to be a part of something special it's here. It's a privilege. It's a privilege, and uh, you know I came here back in 1983 as a 17 year old freshman, and I left here to play pro hockey for 13 years. I came back as a uh, as an assistant coach, and now to be the head coach, I'm grateful for every day I get to be here, and I hope I'm here a lot longer. That's awesome. And I'll leave you with one question. I this is a big topic right now with college hockey for me is neutral site regional games what are we doing like why why are we playing i i personally think the best part of college hockey is the fans the fan bases the traditions and we're playing playoff hockey games college hockey games in manchester new hampshire in allentown pennsylvania why what are your thoughts on that like what are we doing here we got to move forward we got to move forward and i think what we have to do is we have to understand that we're here for the student athletes, for that college, student athlete college experience. And when you get to come into the Ralph Engelstead Arena and play in front of 12,000 fans, or you go into Yost Arena, or you go into Cornell's Rink, um, I'm going to probably uh, disrespect Mike Schaefer here, and I can't pronounce Lynn, Lynn Rink. Uh, but at the end of the day, you get to go into these storied facilities, and you have all these screaming fans, and you get to play one game to keep your season alive. I don't think there's much better uh, than that. Nothing. And, and, and I think we have to move forward, and we got to be progressive. And you know what? It might not be in the Ralph Engelstead Arena. We might have to go out to Yost Arena. We might have to go out east to Providence and play uh, play a game. But let's do it. Exactly. I, that's that's what I think. Like going up to the Alfond in Maine. Yeah. Oh, like that. That one. would be incredible. There's just another one. even just capturing that on TV because I think the the fan at home needs to see that aspect of it Absolutely. as well because a lot of th- a lot of the playoff games aren't nationally. I mean, a lot of college hockey games aren't nationally televised until it gets to the playoffs. Then, yeah. when it gets to the playoffs, if you're sitting there with your kid and you're and he's like, "Dad, what what arena is that? Why are they going so crazy?" You're like, "Oh, son, that's Alphon, that's Maine, or yep. or that's Ra- the Ralph Engel set. That's yep. that's North Dakota." It's he's gonna be like, "I want to go see that. I want to go to a game there." You know, I was grateful enough uh, to be here. Uh, I think it was back in 2005, 2006, um, and we we had a regional here. And, and we had us, we had Michigan, we had Minnesota, and we had Holy Cross. <laughs> Holy Cross upset Michigan in overtime. Or, or Holy Cross upset Minnesota in overtime, right? The place went wild. And then we were the next game playing Michigan. And the place, I've never heard the Ralph erupt as much as when us and Michigan took the ice for that game when it was uh, Zajac and Oshie. And we, <laughs> we, had, we had all these players here that were, that were amazing that are NHL players right now. And Michigan had the same thing. And, but to play in a pack Ralph in Ingolstadt Arena, I'll never, ever forget that day. And I'll, I'll leave you with this then. then. What is your favorite memory here? At uh, I mean, you've won a national championship. I'm sure that's up there. But uh, what, is, what has been your, your most uh, memorable moment here? Wow, I've had a lot of them. Yeah, I can um, imagine. You know what? So I, many Ws, you know? No, well, you know, it's past that. Like, to me... I, I, what, what I, every time I see somebody move on, whether it's uh, uh, getting a great education here, grading their, getting their four-year degree here, moving on um, in their life, uh, whether they're signing an NHL deal, American League deal, uh, playing in Europe, uh, guys that are fulfilling their dreams. And I so tell you, you, you really care about these guys. I absolutely. Like, I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. I would not be doing this if I didn't care about them. Yeah, that's like, awesome. There's man. other things to do, right? Yeah. In life and your family and different things. These guys are my family. Yeah. I think the ultimate compliment you can get is when people call back, whether it's, hey, coach, how you doing? You know, we're watching you. You know, you're playing Duluth this weekend. Go get them. Or else it's, hey, you know what? I'm getting married. Would you like to come to my wedding? Like, wow. Like, to me, and yeah. I, I'll give you a story. Louis Jaminek does his first flight, solo flight, a couple of years ago. I get a call that said, uh, uh, hey, would you like to be uh, to see my first flight? And I, I got to be there for his first solo That's flight. That's awesome. So, you know, those are... I, I guess that's non-hockey so cool. moments yeah. that, that are just real life stuff, and I love that. that those are the cool moments. I think that's what, uh, and you played at the professional level, you played at the coaching level, but I mean at the college level. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's what separates coaching college and coaching pro. Yeah, is you really get to see these guys grow from. I mean, they come come in here as boys. They do, and they're leaving as you know. 24, 28-year-old 20, men over here. 100 <laughs> percent. And you know what? Like in pro hockey too. Like you know, you're making money now. For the most part, yeah. you're making your money. That's your job, right? These guys still have another level to get to. Like yeah. they, they have motivation to try to get to that level. But like you know, we, as long as those players are investing in themselves and working and, and being a good person, that's what we're all about. Is trying to enhance them each and every day. And uh, 
it makes you feel a little bit young too, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm getting up there in age and I get to feel a little bit younger like these guys. Exactly. Well, coach, I can't thank you enough for having us. Uh, anything else we, anything we should check out before we go? Like what is one thing in the barn that you think like we got, they got to go check that one out. You know what? I just think the, 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 the graphics and the pictures around here, like, you know, we're, we're all about tradition and history. Yeah. The people that came before us, there are so many cool pictures here. And I know I, I, I shared some stories with, uh, with Jammer of some of the players that came before us here. We wouldn't be here unless Ralph Ingolstead uh, would gratefully donated the money for this awesome facility. We wouldn't be here unless the, the players that came before us, the coaches that came before us, put the block to the foundation of our program here. We're just trying to make this place a better place uh, just like they did. You say the stories, I have to ask. Like, yeah. What is the craziest story you can remember from your time here? Well, you know what? I. Again, like when I was a 17 going on 18 year old freshman coming in here, like you're wide eyed, man, coming from small town Alberta and Canada and you're coming in here. And, you know, I just think the, the coaches that I had, I had Gino Gasparini, I had Dean Blaze, I had John Marks, I had Kerry Eads. They were all coaches here and, uh, and, and, and how imposing and how. Um, I guess I made made me accountable, made me made me turn into a man as far as you know my morals and 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 my beliefs. And I remember the first day I walked on campus here and I came into the rink, the old Ralph Ingolstead Arena, and Gino Gasparini put up up a green fighting suit jersey, and uh, he held it up to all of us freshmen. There's nine freshmen that when we came in that year, and he holds it up. He goes, "Hey guys, the logo on the front." is more important than the name on the back. And don't you ever forget that. And you know what, I pass this on to each and every one of our freshman classes each time they come in. And, and it's, it, 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 it's our tradition and history and what we are. And I think when you leave here at North Dakota, that's not just about hockey. When you look at real life, it's about other people, about serving other people, about not just being about yourself, it's about being a servant leader. And I think that is such a big thing that Gino Gasparini taught me and that was one of my best memories that first day on campus awesome well coach we can't thank you enough we won't keep you any longer but thank you for appreciate being here. you of guys course. do an outstanding job thank of course. you whoa nice job g i'm juiced up for them tonight now yeah great talker you, great question answer just excitement just good energy you can see why he's been there so long and i talked to jay caulfield boys who i work with he's a nodak guy started hockey there uh, he's from philly was a football guy but played with Brad Berry and he talks to him quite a bit. All like they're good buddies still from their time playing there. And you wait, can see did you why. see in the in the Chicklets you the stuff about Jay Caulfield? I never knew that. No, yeah. So yeah, he, he's a crazy he, story. He played football for three years at North Dakota, broke his neck. neck. It wouldn't clear him for football. So he walked across the street played hockey and now he's golfing with Mario Lemieux yeah. every day. It's like, <laughs> what a, wow. Oh my God. It's a crazy story. And he's huge guy. And obviously had a tough job switching over to hockey. He told me his first day at camp, uh, like coming out with the team, they, something had happened and he came into it. Well, they when they were getting a bag skate. So his first day there and like Jay wasn't the greatest skater, you know, obviously not growing up around the game and playing pretty much started playing in college. It's a gr crazy story, and he made That's it to insane. the NHL. He won Stanley Cups with the Penguins. He assisted on Mario's fifth goal on the five goals, five different ways on the empty netter. It's just uh, like, and just such a great, humble, good dude. But he's built and huge like a football player. So I get to hear all these great North Dakota stories from him. He's North Dakota strong still, still talks to Brad Berry, the great coach of that team. And, um, yeah, that was a great interview. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I saw Brad Zelensky in the chat said it was 10 out of 10 for Chicklets U. So go check out that episode. I'm glad we got to that interview with us here, Merles. Um, I know people are saying we got to get the picks. You got some picks. There's four games tonight in college. Michigan Tech mm -hmm. versus BC. Western Michigan versus Michigan State. Quinnipiac versus Wisconsin. And then later tonight at 830, Michigan against North Dakota. So we got a, a full slate of college games. You got some action for us here? Yeah, at first I was I, I didn't really think I was going to take this BC game, but it's 2 p.m. I mean, it's coming up hour and a half. I saw some people in the chat. The minus two and a half is already already minus 166. That's a lot of juice for me, but I think I'll add the over six and a half. Just have some fun there. 
Maybe Love that, Mer. I saw people Maybe in the chat were saying yeah. over. Hammer the Love over. The over. Yeah, over. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm riding with the chat on that one just because it's going to be fun. I am definitely going to watch it. I'm going to take my, my daughter and over to my nephews and have them all watch the game. But my real game, I love Quinnipiac on the money line, minus 115. We saw what they did last year. They have they know how to win in these situations. The old team. Colin Graf is sick. Yeah, he's going to be the big free agent everybody's looking at in the NHL. Oh, by the way, you should have seen the amount of scouts at this thing yesterday. Yeah, oh, what was it like? Just black oh. trench coat jackets with yeah. logos all oh. over everything with yeah. clipboards? A bunch of old guys I knew. Uh, Ray, uh, Jed Ortmeyer from the Rangers I talked to. Dougie Janik, he's with Nashville. And then Army, remember, remember Merle's <laughs> chirping all the scouts at the Frozen Four last year? <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy. I wish I knew who that guy was. There's that one guy had the Florida golf shirt on, just mm. super tight. I saw uh, Mikey Ryan. I saw from Florida. Yeah. He was there. But then, yeah. of all people, all people, you, you guys, your Penguins. I see this giant Penguins logo coming at me on a black coat. It's Dubis. Dubis was there. <laughs> Dubis was there. And I'm like, hey, I'm, I was almost like, hey, Dubis, you might not want to be wearing that logo around right now. Like your team stinks right now. We're still wow. in it. We're well, still in the mix. Here we go. Here We're we still go. in the mix. What are you talking about? No one wants to take that second wild card no. spot, Merles. It's still well, hold on. all right. Let's say hold we'll on in the it. NHL. We'll Let me finish it. up the let's finish up the college. You see down there, I got Quinnipiac and then I got North Dakota. After that interview, it, I'm gonna push everything on that if I if I win all day. We'll make that a, a monster play. That's our team now. Maine's out. North Dakota's maybe our new team. So I like that coach. He sounded like a great guy. So we're gonna oh, we're gonna awesome. we're gonna move on them. Burles, we go. we gotta... I, can I can I give you guys some picks as well for college? Yeah, let's Absolutely. go. Absolutely. So Everyone I actually I love Cornell uh, on the money line against Denver Saturday. I Denver is gonna be so gassed. They just played that double overtime game. I just I for Cornell. You you described how they're big, they're physical, they're gonna wear them down. So I like Cornell on the money line Saturday. But tonight. I love North Dakota money line. I am going to take BC on the puck line, but I love, I love Michigan State minus one and a half. That team is so good. Like yeah. that team, if they weren't going up against North Dakota in the next, if if North Dakota wins, um, I I would have Michigan State in the Frozen Four. But I love Michigan State tonight uh, minus one and a half. Who's I that? Love the the Iceman. The Iceman. Yeah, yeah and Red guy. Savage. They have a great yeah, team. They have the a bunch Iceman. of Chicklets fans on their team. <laughs> It's crazy. The crazy thing about Red Savage, this kid, I've told this story a few times. I saw like a this this 15-year-old kid at the like the first Chicklets Cup we did. He was standing because you have to be 21 to get in. So this kid is like standing out front and he's like, We I walked by a couple of times. He's like, Grinelli, Grinelli. So I, I I went over and talked to him. He's like, they won't let me in. He's like, I'm going to play pro hockey someday. He's like, I'm going to win a world juniors. I'm going to play division one hockey. He's like, can you, can you try and let me in? And I was like, bro, I'll try and sneak you in. That kid ended up, he was spot on. He was red savage, ended up playing on the U S world junior team. He ended up winning a gold medal. I believe with them, he got drafted. Now he's at Michigan state. So it was kind of crazy. That kid like manifested it all right. Then he's like, I know I'm going to be good enough. Let me come meet the boys. And, so, yeah, I, I love this Michigan State team. That's a good story, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Hockey's such a small world. It's just crazy. But I love how NCAA's games today and yesterday, they stack them right through starting at 2. Last game starts at 8.30, so you get your fill. Get on there and watch this hockey. These, these kids are battling to get to the Frozen Four. Where we'll be. We'll be there. It's going to be electric. We'll have some news for that coming up, I'm sure, right, G? Once we get some things in place and some times and some schedules and our trip. A little and Pink Whitney happened. party. We'll have a little Pink Whitney party, a little chat meet up like we did Ooh. last year. Oh, that was fun. I was handing out Pink Whitney shots like crazy. It was insane, Merle's. Hat tricks was awesome. Tampa. That place was unreal. Yeah, jerseys everywhere. For some reason, too, speaking of North Dakota, there were they weren't in the tournament. They weren't at the Frozen Four. There was a gazillion North Dakota jerseys at Hattricks when we were there, too. So they show up and show out their fans. It's cool to see everyone that kind of takes in that event. Really fun thing to go to. I asked in the chat if anyone was going. I don't know if anyone answered. I lost track. But hopefully we see you guys. If you have time to make it, it's a fun event. It's awesome. The fan zones, everything they have set up there, it's just a great experience uh, of hockey and like fandom and and friendliness and people traveling in to go to these things. So really, really cool experience. Merle's, you want to get your Euro pick? I have a question for you. Speaking yeah. of college hockey, mm -hmm. 
um, just about like the new thing that's coming in. I think it's wild. I think it is going to be wild. But do you want to give your Euro pick first? Um, yeah. So in Sweden, a huge game today. It's game seven of the relegation. So it's HV 71 story team versus Oscar Shum. I don't, I'm no way I'm saying that right. But this Oscar Shum. Shum team, they came up from kind of the minors a few years back. Everybody's kind of been hoping they get knocked back down because it's just it's a small team, like small rank. Nobody wants to travel there. Everybody wants to see HV stay up. So this is a huge one. Whoever wins stays up. Whoever loses goes down to the minors. Huge game, but it's an EBR rule. Game seven, we go under game sevens. And this game yeah. seven is this is bigger than game seven to win the championship because the jobs, your contracts, the whole city, money, money is huge money. So they're all going to be nervous. They're all going to be playing tight. Under five is plus 100. I saw under five and a half move down to 148, which is that's not too bad a juice delay, but I'm going to stick with the under five plus a hundred. This is a two, one, two, nothing game. Oh yeah. All day, all day in Sweden. They're mm. so scared to like lose. <laughs> They're so scared. It's defense shutdown over there. hundred percent. I love that call Merles, especially, especially with the EBR rule. In Sweden, it's like it that is to me a no brainer. I can't see any more than three goals being scored in that entire game. Yeah, I, that's yeah, just I mean, what I know. I should look at the alternate lines then, maybe it's under three and a half. Oh, under three and a half plus 300. Woo. Woo. Dabble Ooh, in that a little, little, little army sprinkle, that. little arm Zempic sprinkle on that. I think that, that might be your little, play. You like the that big might be the arm Zempic. I like those <laughs> odds. I like the arm Zempic play of the uh, what is it, three under three and a half? What was yeah. it, three? Under three and a half plus 300. Whoa. Let's go. Mark that down. There we go. That's <laughs> that's one for the books right there. The old arm Zempic. Um, I wanted to bring up, though, on the NCAA chatter too, Merles, and it, it made some news, and I think it's going to happen. It was at the GM meetings that they just recently had, and the news came out. But like, it's so curious to me, and I want to know what you make of it with the eligibility factor of CHL players and NCAA now and kind of what that'll look like for the landscape of hockey the landscape of development, the landscape of, of uh, junior A leagues or junior B leagues in Canada now where all these guys, Kale McCarr goes and plays for and, you know, the BC Junior League that all these teams have that, uh, you know, you go there so you don't lose your college eligibility. Like that, like everything is going to be insane out the window. I know what the chat thinks about this and maybe it's out of sight, out of mind, but I think this is like a massive, massive move in hockey for the NHL at the top, obviously, in signing contracts. And I say this all the time, Merles, the players in college have 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 the ball in their court, right? Because they can they can play in college, then they can have good years. They're a little bit older, they're a little bit more mature by this time. Um, they they can hold off and say, No, I'm not signing. Like they kind of have a thing. And like I don't know what's gonna happen with this with this whole eligibility thing and how this is going to sway and what's gonna happen. It's gonna be it's going to be the Wild West. Yeah, I mean, I don't know all the details of it, but I think it's going to be good for college hockey because it's already trending this way. You see the teams that are left, like the big teams that can give the money, they can give those NIL deals. The, the Big Ten schools have all the money. I think they would have completely run away with everything. So now with the CHL players coming down, maybe these smaller schools, they can grab like a guy. These- ACHA ACHA teams that we talk about that are trying to get division one programs in California, in some of these other places that now you're, now you're dealing with a whole nother pocket of players that are going to be freed up possibly to come to you. And I don't know. I, I find it. It's going to, it's going to change like what hockey's like, like for me, like I think this puts the draft almost in jeopardy in a way. Cause it's like you selected me, but I don't care. I'll play my two years of junior hockey and then I'll, I'll, and then I'll ditch out the junior teams like it in the CHL. They don't have to pay my school package. Now they're out from underneath all that money. And then I'll go down to these awesome schools that I can get recruited to and say, I'm going to go there. And like your window is so much more open. Now you can tell NHL teams that sign you or want to sign, you No, I don't want to sign there. And now you're like a free agent. You're still playing college. Like it's, it's yeah, if they crazy. keep it's that college be... rule, it, it'll be crazy. It will. I think it's going to be good. It'll make the runway a little longer for some players. Some guys, you know, that took later to develop. Now they can maybe spread out. They can play a couple extra years. 
But I just think the biggest thing will be these smaller schools that can't offer the big money in college will now find some better players. It'll make everything a little more competitive instead of the Big Ten running away with everything. And maybe some of these new schools, like you're saying, now there's more players. Maybe we will see UNLV get a Division I team. Maybe we will see UCLA get in the mix or you know Georgia or some of these other SEC schools, something like that, because now there is going to be a huge pool of players available. Yeah, and I think I think it's going to make college hockey a little older. I think mm-hmm. we're going to see some of those more older players. What's it going to do to the American League? Are they going to have to change the rules from the veteran rule in the American League to only having three veterans or whatever the rule is of like 200 games, you're now a veteran? They're going to have to, because guys will just stay in school now, I would imagine, yeah, right? Know. And these these teams will say, I want to sign you to a contract. And then what? They're going to say, we want you to stay in college. So then they roll your years back. What they're going to start doing is like guys will sign and then they'll just be rolled back so that they don't become a, you know, their entry level deal now ends when they're 25. Yeah. Like we could see this happening, which is, which is crazy. It's going to be a gong show. It's going to be great for hockey. It's going to open the door. It's going to put some power in the player's hands a little bit. I think maybe, I don't know how this is all going to shape up, but I think the landscape of hockey in NCAA in the CHL now, if this goes through in the next couple of years, it's going to be absolutely wild. I got a 13 year old kid, so this is kind of oh yeah, you're into it. Yeah, that's why you're so <laughs> invested in it. Um, well, by the time my kids the, into it, it'll be totally different again. Yeah, well, all the loopholes will be figured out. You'll have it all figured out. You'll be solved. <laughs> you're a smart hockey guy, Merles. You know how to work these angles. So stay, <laughs> keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on all that. What it's due to USHL with eligibility now too. If kids want to go up and play, I mean, there's nothing holding you back from playing in the CHL now. Uh, if this goes through. And so I think it's pretty interesting for um, what college hockey, junior hockey and prospects and what's going to happen going forward with the NHL. Just keep an eye on that for the next couple of years, because that seems to be picking up some steam here as something that'll um, possibly happen and go through. So where we got Merle's, we got our picks, yeah. we got the Euro pick. We got four. Yeah, I think it's uh, swing it over. That's enough college talk. Swing it over. Talk some NHL. Yep. Let's snap it, it around, buddy boy. And the uh, first one on our list is the Yotes. The Yotes of all teams snapped the Predators point streak, and it's wild. I got to shout out Wit on this one. I talked to him yesterday. We're just, we're, we can't find a winner. You got me, him, and Elio in a group text, and we're just cold as can be. Can we, we were looking for winners. Is this can, and I'm like, oh, Nashville, that line's a little funny. Three way plus 100. Wit's like, do not touch that game. He goes, this is how Trap it works. Game. Yep. He's like, they'll, they'll lose to that kind of team and that kind of building. And he's like, stay away. And it, and he did Um, your guy, Logan Cooley with the hat Patty. trick as yep. we're talking college. So uh, we saw him last year at the frozen four. So there it is. Preds point streak is done, but they are buzzing. And I was just looking at the standings. Now first round matchup. I think if it started today would be against Vancouver. Mm. And I, I think I'd be on the Preds in that. What do you think? Buddy, there's some monster matchups possibly going to happen. Like LA, Vegas, where do these teams slot once it all flips around and settles in? Who are they going to play in that wild card spot that gets to play? You know, you get to play one of those teams too. Like LA clogs it up. They're tough to play against Vegas. We know what they could be. <laughs> um, like, can you imagine like a Vegas against Vancouver? I mean, just, <laughs> it's just insane. Vegas what we're I know they're kind of sliding right now too, Vancouver. It's, it's, it's crazy, mm-hmm. but we'll see someone in the chat just says Canucks Preds was this Nux three and O against Nashville this year. Yeah, Not this playoffs Nashville a different team. animal. And I think that's why too, with the, with the, with the um, looking for winners talk that you're having in your chat, by the way, I got to see that chat. I would love to see the <laughs> amount of negativity in that chat. <laughs> it must be just amazing. Yeah. Any chat I've had with Elio or you on a group chat, it's just like, oh, not again. Oh, it's going to happen. I'm like, no, boys, believe, believe, believe. Uh-uh. You have to have the belief. And it's just like, no, you, I can't get through the the mushing. The, the yeah. Well, we had it. We had four days. I, I should have probably talked about it more earlier, but we had four days of gambling. We're just losing, Whoa. losing. Bad beat, bad beat. Finally, Sunday. We start making some momentum. We had we had Dallas and Tampa Bay, and then we roll. We're we're in the car. We hit. We're like, all right, let's roll it on somebody. Whip pulls his phone up. He's like, Saber, smash it. So me, him, and Dave, we smash it. We go. We get back to the hotel in um, 
who was playing Houston goes to overtime with like smash Houston minus three and a half live. Boom. We hit that. We hit another game. We're finally hot. All the games ended for the day. There was no more games anywhere in the world. So like as soon as we got going and yeah, it uh, cooled yeah, you off. They switched yeah, the dealer on you. That's what we're they little, did. Yeah. Of course, the biggest beat of all time in that video of, of Elio. By the way, someone made a video of Elio, that video that was going online where it was like a Johnny Cash song. I will make you, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you pain. I will make it hurt as he takes his sunglasses <laughs> off when they missed the empty debtor oh. for the extra goal. I was texting with you there. We're playing out all the scenarios in Arizona for that yeah. game, too. I was like, they have to score here. They can't score again. You need to keep it close so you get a double goalie pull. And you're like, yep, that's the only way. That's the path. That's the path to success. We need a double goalie pull. They pull the goalie again. Jamie Ben misses that empty net. And that's when that video took place because Elio is just like heartbroken. But before that, he had that epic beat with that empty netter from Dallas offside mm-hmm. goal that they recalled back. And it was, it was just like he thought oh. he won. He thought he won when he came in. So... I can yeah, so we hear negative. him scream because he was on a delay watching in a phone booth and we hear him scream we're like, yes, he's back. And by the time he walked from there to the main viewing thing there, it was getting challenged and everybody he thinks everybody's fucking with him. So he he goes and he walks around to me. He's like, I'm like his safety blanket. Merle's won't lie to me. Right. And if you yeah. see it on that video where he walks around, you can't see it. But my laptop is under there. And he's like, Merle's what happened? And I'm like, dude, no goal. And he looks down at my computer. And at the same time, the ref is like this, the no goal <laughs> sign. Oh, no. And that's when he's devastated. Like his, like his soul left his body. Yeah. He turns and just walks away. But that the was walking dead. Thing. He was doing the walking yeah. dead right away out of there. They're trying to capture him. I just, Elio was just on all time. So yeah, that's where the negativity comes from. We need to get it turned. We need we to get, get it turned. turned. And hockey is weird right now too. I feel like. Hockey's weird right now. Teams are tightening up. It's becoming more intense. We see the physicality picking up in a lot of these games. Things matter a lot more. Their games mm-hmm. matter a lot more. I think it's hard to, from a gambling perspective, to gamble right now just because the games and the and going into games and the teams are just so different this time of year. Whether you're out of it too, like these teams that are out of it are have something to play for. They're trying to kill these other teams now. So it's like they, a totally different vibe. Yeah. Last night, two only two overs out of the fourteen games. Two overs, so it's yeah. just a it's a tough time to be a nice person. It's tightening up, and we had a tough weekend last weekend too. On top of the ice con, oh my god, I don't want to bring it up, but no, I just I did. Know. Sorry, Ooh. chat. Sorry, we yeah, love you, chat. Sorry, guys. We're gonna bring. But it I again. mean, I swept the last two Sundays, so it was a matter of time to get the reverse sweep the other way. Yeah, That's it happens. How it works. It's how it works. That's how it works, baby. Um, I want to bring up to you because we got into it. You can chirp me about the pens. But the East is, I mean, if you look at that last wild card spot, Philly may mm. be in there too, just out of reach, but they're definitely in play right now as well. I, I, I'll i go through. Pens have New Jersey, Caps, Detroit, Long Island, their last game and their last remaining game. Those are huge games for them. Huge. If they're going to make any kind of, like there's some kind of hope there because all these other teams have to take care of business too. New Jersey has Buffalo, who was kind of in the picture, not really, but they play the Flyers. They play Long Island the last game as well, their last game of the season, New Jersey. Those are just insane that those two teams have to do that. Like the Pens could upset Long Island, and New Jersey might have to beat them, and Long Island might have to beat Jersey as maybe in that last wildcard spot. I don't know. Depends what Washington, Detroit, these other teams got to do. Merles, Detroit plays Washington, the Buffalo, the Penguins. Um, and they play Montreal back to back their last two games of the year. That could come down to that for them. That's and they're nice. a weird team. What's going on with them? Washington, the weirdest team of all. Two games yeah. against Buffalo. They play Detroit, they play the Penguins, and they play the Flyers in their last game. That could be insane. That great, could like coming. Great job by the schedule makers this year. Oh, it's unreal. <laughs> the, Lo- the Islanders, they play the Flyers, the Devils, the Pens in their last game is against uh, uh, the Penguins. That's their last game of the year, too. For them, that could be the Penguins if they're out of it, okay, but they got to try to get in where they're sitting right now. The Pens could take them right out of it. So keep track of that second card, wild card positioning, the third place in the Metro. Can Mm -hmm. some of these teams jump into that? And can will the Flyers fall out of that? I find that these races totally interesting down the stretch here. And depending on how some teams, if they can get hot against certain teams, those are four-point games. Um you know, lots can change, lots of movement. I think it should be exciting for all those fan bases, Merles. Yeah, talk about fan bases. Could you see Biz on TNT 
I mean, talk about zero confidence your team. He wants them to lose and drop into the second wild card <laughs> so he gets to play the Rangers because he's so scared of the other teams. Like how their Leafs are just that's pathetic, Biz. If you're if you're in charge of Leafs Nation, you got to have some confidence you can beat one of those teams. Oh, I, I it's I, I love his takes on the Leafs, though. <laughs> you know why I love it? Because he is on the pulse of a Leaf fan to a T. He is a Leaf fan through and through with his thoughts, with what he's thinking, how he's a fan, no matter what. He doesn't see what they are. He just sees what he thinks they are. And I, I it's, it's exactly on point, Merles. It is yeah. precisely on point to the heartbeat of Leafs Nation. Which is they, unbelievable. They, they know they can't beat the Bruins or the Panthers. It's hilarious. <laughs> it is hilarious. Uh, uh, huge games last yeah. night. Some monster matchups. Mm -hmm. um, Rangers beat the Abs, which we'll get into. I want to talk about that. Great game. Mm -hmm. Dallas beat Vancouver. The Oilers. Um, they took it. Did they? What happened with the Oilers? They lost to the LA. They, no, they beat LA. They beat LA. They sorry, beat LA. which could be which. Yeah, which is, is a big game. Uh, and Vegas beat Winnipeg. Vegas is starting to roll, buddy. Just unbelievable monster matchups right now. It's, it was cool last night getting to see that, which is why I, you know our show used to be on Thursdays. We got one game tonight. There was all this Ooh. action last night, which was <laughs> crazy for game notes for the chat. What's up, yeah. chat? Yeah, it gives us something to talk about, though. But the, I, I, I'm not giving up on McKinnon getting a point there. The streak ended. I, I want to hear a, an official thing from the league or something I, I saw some people saying colorado can protest it yeah and still get that point back and uh oof, you throw that guy it. you put that guy at the rink with the nhl blazer on that keeps track of that that has to come down after the games and like check over everything you put him in a headlock and you throw him in a closet yeah and you just you say hey change this right now no. i threw out a tweet last night merles and i knew because on our on our on our we had a little our group chat you're like, oh, no, I got to put on my McKinnon jersey. <laughs> Literally two minutes later when you put that, boom, oh. goal right there. It was unbelievable how it happened. And then they announced it. There was a delay in the announcement. Obviously, they're reviewing. They're looking at it. They're looking at it. They're looking at it. And then they announced an unassist unassisted goal for Taves, who shot it from the point from McKinnon. If you haven't seen it yet, I saw it. I sent a tweet out. I, I thought it should be an assist for him. Like, um, Lindgren of the Rangers puts his stick out on the rebound. He doesn't shoot the puck. People are like, oh, he hit it in his own net. He didn't hit it in his own net. Okay. That's the difference. He didn't hit it in his own net. Rantanen shoots his stick into the puck as his puck, his stick goes between his stick, Rantanen's stick and the puck. Rantanen goes to bang in the rebound and he hits Lindgren's stick in. It's just a schmozzle. He has no possession of the puck. He has nothing. It should be. Fine. Give it to yeah. Taze. Assist to McKinnon. Fine. That wasn't an, like an own goal. It's not like he, he batted it in or he made a play on it and, and made a possession play. He was sticking his stick in there. He had nothing to do and it got knocked in off a rebound, a schmozzle around the net. I, 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 that's how I feel about it. And I got yeah, people I, I on me, Merles, about Kucherov against LA uh, a, few, a few days ago. Point. He passes it out front. Point chips it in. The D man's there. He's he's kind of whacking at it, and like it looks like he kind of whacks it out of the air on his own. It's a totally different scenario of that point. But screw it, give Kucherov the point. I don't give a shit. Give him the assist for putting yeah. it in there to the mixer, and and it's a gong show melee. Point whacks at it too. He gets a piece of it, and and this guy whacks it out of the way, but he whacks ends up whacking his own net. He actually ended up whacking his own net. Difference of just sticking your stick in there and not doing anything, and it hits him and goes in. I don't know how you feel about that. I, uh, I I think it should have been fine. I mean, I've seen a lot worse assists given in different in different scenarios than that. That that's how it was in like the KHL. It's so hard to get a point because if you scored off yeah. a rebound, then you only got one assist. And like, what are we doing here? Like, keep this thing going. I want. I was watching every Avs game following this streak, but you know, the real conspiracy theorists are saying they don't they don't want that Gretzky record going away. So that's part of it too. They were waiting for any chance. To take that down to leave Gretzky 99 with another record. So yeah, they gotta have them all the records. I see McKinnon or um McDavid with his assist thing. Do you see the board for that? Most assists no. in a season. It's like 
Gretzky, 168. Gretzky, 160. Gretzky, 158. Gretzky, 150. And it's just like Gretzky all the way down. And then it's like Lemieux, one something. Lemieux, another one. And then it's like Gretzky, 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 all the way down to you get to McDavid's number all the way down there. But it was pretty amazing when McDavid, 120 plus point seasons. What is it, five years in a row now? It's crazy. What did Whit, what did Whit is he going to catch them and win it? Buddy, if he catches, I don't know. I tweeted that he might catch a while ago, and he was way back. This is yeah. like when they were at like 90 points, and he had like 78 or something like that. And I was like, Mc McDavid could catch him. And Bucci, our boy, Bucci, mm -hmm. he came on. He's like, not a chance, responded on social media. And I was <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. And now he's like, he's right there with games in hand, too. He has a few more games. And like, yeah, it's fun. It's what fun do you for think? us to follow. I I don't. I think those other two guys are just too good. If it was somebody else up there, I just think they're too good. And now McKinnon's grumpy, so uh, watch out for him. Now he's going to be high stepping even more. Yeah, I know. I, I what if he just went didn't get a point, and now he kind of goes quiet a little bit on a cold streak. I don't know. <laughs> it'd be it'd be interesting to see. But anyways, last night too. One quick one. <laughs> Merle's um, Crosby, couple points. He now has uh, nine points in his last three games. Just cranked it up. Uh, four point game against Colorado on TNT did that game uh, last game against Carolina, three points and two points last night and, and just one point ahead and passes Ray Bork on the all time points list. I believe he's in 11th all time. Now I think Esposito's on his radar. He's quite a few ahead of him. And then he gets into the uh, Joe Sackick. I find it awesome watching him right now, just because in the last number of years, like the names on the list that he's like passing or in, in company with is guys that like we grew up, we grew up idolizing and like yeah. he grew up posters idolizing and start yeah. lineups and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's just unbelievable to see. So congrats to Sid, another milestone, another guy passed another legend, uh, Ray Bork. And, um, yeah, pretty cool. Five assists away from a thousand in his career as well, which he could get this year. Another another milestone for him on a season that's been pretty much all Sid the Kid for the Penguins all year who's long. This, who's, who's this guy? Gab Fid throwing big money in there to say go, go Leafs go. Is that business <laughs> burner? Yeah. This, this is burner throwing some on the money chat. around. Holy Biz throw that in money in my account after my losses yesterday on Maine. Yeah, and and it's gonna it's gonna pick up. It's hot and heavy with hockey right now, Merle's quiet night tonight, but NCAA is the day. Follow Merles' picks. Follow EBR. Mm -hmm. We got you covered. Do we want to get into tonight's game? Just yeah. one game today, Friday. Merles, what do you got? I got the Devils. I'm usually a Buffalo guy, but the Devils, they've won four out of five since that clown, Pasha, made the, made the claim that they need the Houdini for Celebrini and start losing. <laughs> so he's having such a bad year. He wants his team to finally lose. Now they start winning. So I'm going to take the Devils again, even though they, they their only loss was against Ottawa on Saturday when we were at the Barstool Bar, which I hammered and lost. So um, Devils are playing great. They're in, if they win today, they're right they're right in there for them that last. They're wild right card. there. So they're right there. I'm on them. I'm on Luke Hughes to get a point plus one ten. He's been he's been he's been picking up points, and then Thompson over a half a point as well for the Sabers. Only one game. I'll have that in the background TV on the side TV because I'll have I'll have the North Dakota game at 830. But I, I want to root for both things there a little bit. But I like the Devils a lot to win that game and and keep Pasha losing, even though it's his team winning, if that makes any sense. Oh, pa Pasha's brain's going to be in a in a pretzel. He wants them to <laughs> lose, but they're going to win. Then they're going to have a chance to get in. And then he's he, and then he's going to be like, no, we got I, I don't know where he's going to go with it. I don't yeah, know. He's been he gets, wrong. I, I, I want to see him lose year. it on the last game. I wonder who Pasha's do they play had a last tough, game? Tough. Uh, they play the Islanders on their last game. Ooh. Oh my God. That could set up for perfect. Yeah. We might have to live stream Pasha watching that game. <laughs> he should have to go. He should have to go to long Island to watch that. Yeah, game go to Borelli's. Borelli's. Go to Borelli's and watch with Frankie. Pasha should go into the, into the, into the chaos of Borelli's. For the last game of the year, it could set up for unbelievable play in or play out game. Kind of what's happening in Sweden here today, too, with your pick. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that's, that's that's the play. Let's root for that. We gotta get them there. Let's root for that finishing act. One game but if tonight. They, if they don't win is, tonight, they're done. Yeah, you they think gotta, so? They gotta win this. Gotta win this one. Gotta win again. You gotta win the games you're supposed to win. There's no question yeah, about it this if time. You're gonna right make now. a run. 
If you're going to be run there, it. we'll see if you're a pretender. Are you a pretender? That would move him up to 78 points. They're right there. They put him right there, but they did have played more games. But they got to win tonight. Win tonight, you're still alive. There we go. They got to win tonight. Only one game, so keep an eye on that for that race mm-hmm. in the East. Tomorrow night, massive night. Yeah. Massive night. It's almost a frenzy. 15 yeah. games, Merle. Saturday night. Here we go. You got your plays. There's the schedule. There's a slate. Lots to choose from. Merle's has got a lot of a lot going on. Yep. Uh, I, I thought about that Detroit, Florida, just because it was so early, 1230. I'm going to be watching, but uh, it's a tough game to pick. So nothing on that one. I'm going with the Oilers, minus one and a half versus the Ducks. Yep. And McDavid to get over one and a half points. If I can find over two and a half points, you know, this is the game where McDavid can – can run it up and and catch these guys. Look for him to get three or four points. I got Jets three way versus the the Senators. I got Lightning money line versus the Islanders. I love the Lightning. They're 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 playing good hockey. I that Declare pickup was great. The they're I like them. They they might win the cup again. I got the Blues three way versus the Sharks. The Sharks are done. They might not win another game all season. And then the Dallas Stars minus one and a half. They've won the last six straight. All by minus one and a half. Kraken, they're done. So those are the plays for Saturday. Big day, long day. And there will be some NCAA games thrown into the mix on Twitter. I love it. I love it. a boy. Stay tuned on Merle's Twitter. I'll retweet them as well. Uh, we'll have you covered on all that stuff. There's just one game on Sunday, and then we'll get – I think we'll just save uh, – a little beer league heroes, maybe a little show mindsies right at the end, Merle's, uh, but we'll stick with it here with the one game on Sunday. Yeah, it's got it brutal. Right there. So uh, one game, I got I to gotta go Vancouver, minus one and a half. Like I said, Ducks yeah. are done. Those kind of teams, Ducks, Sharks, they're done. Uh, look for Vancouver. Try to They got to they, they win. They got to start winning. They're, they're like we just talked about. They're not looking great. So let them to go. But Sunday will be the winners of this NCAA games today. So there's going to be great hockey besides that so one game on Sunday. One game today with all these games, 15 tomorrow, Saturday. One game on Sunday, but we got some more NCAA action. Once again, keep track of the socials with Merles and I. We'll we'll get them out there for you uh, to keep track of the chats buzzing. Love the chat. Out of go chat. We love you. Let's get into uh, Beer League Heroes, Merles. I'm interested with yeah. this one. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what you got. Yeah, I got I a know. random message here. I don't know if I kept the guy's name or not, but he sends me a message that he was at his kids' hockey and then he was watching Beer League. And he sees this guy come out, and he came out in full Gretzky attire. Who is this guy that gave it to me? I got to shout him out. Joe Martin. And I think he said he played for Whitney oh. South Shore Kings. But look at this guy. He's in full 80s Gretzky. 80s Oilers, even the skates. Skates, the, the dark tux, the Jofa helmet. And he's a righty. He said he even puts, like, the baby powder <laughs> on the friction tape. Like, this guy goes all in, even though he's not a lefty, to really look like him. But I want to know what your thoughts on that. Like, is that... Uh, is that show? Is that mind? Is that a I joke? Think, I think once is hilarious, but if he's doing it every time, come on. You got to imagine he's just trying to get like a laugh out of everyone, right? Like, I, I, like if he's, he's not trying he's to get a laugh, then that's mindsies. He looks well. exactly like Gretz 80s Oilers. I mean, that's unbelievable. And it, it, like the thing is, I'd love to be inside his mind or around him to know if that he's just a huge Gretzky fan. And he's doing that for a laugh to G's point, or if he really thinks he's Wayne Gretzky, <laughs> like he's that great. He looks like Wayne Gretzky there. Holy smokes. That's, yeah, that's unbelievable funny. that we saw that. <laughs> I, 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 that's gotta be like, um, that's gotta be kind of, kind of mindsies, even though I love the great one. The great what, one's the best. The great one's the best. Thanks for sending that in. That's a, that's a beer league heroes going full NHL look attire. That's like guys showing up to like, pick up basketball at the local basketball place dressed completely head to toe LeBron. Yeah. Isn't it? No, I don't even want to No, We're not comparing LeBron to Gretzky. No, 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 no. no, no, no I'm no, just no, saying no. you're okay. dressed up full yeah. gear. Yes. Full gear. Jordan. I, let's, let's go Jordan. Jordan and yeah. Gretzky. There Jordan. I'm a Jordan. LeBron, I'm, I'm so sick of LeBron. Um, as we're talking about beer, I'm going to segue it right into my mindsies. I'm going to do my mindsies before the show today, because Last night we talked NCAA. I'm over there and we're having a couple. We're we're excited that there's serving beer at the place. So we have a couple pops. 
the UMass game goes to double overtime and we're sitting in the bar where we've been throughout the day and there's 15 minutes on the clock before the second OT starts. And the guy goes, Hey, he goes, we got to clear the bar out. You guys drank all the beer. We got to restock the fridges. And I'm like, Hmm, that's a little strange. So you're going to clear out a hundred customers. Why can't you just reload them? Like I've seen a million times in bars. Yeah. The bar you're back. on the fly. He, no, no, we're all out. And then he, so then the guy opens up like the kegerator where the kegs are. He's like, look, there's no more beer left. And I'm like, you don't store canned beer where the keg is. I'm like, is there, is there tap beer left? He goes, yeah, there's still left. I'm like, well then just give those to everybody and restock when the game is actually on. Cause the whole place will clear out once the overtime starts. No, no, we got to clear out right now. Everybody's got to go. And I'm like, wow, this is really weird. So we, we go out and we're watching it. And now these main fans are showing up because their game's supposed to start. They're like, they don't serve beer at these games. Like, oh, yeah, they're everywhere, serving beer everywhere. No, the guy said there's no beer. Come to find out. I go out. I start investigating on this. They come out, and the cop tells me, he goes, whoever organized this only bought the permit for till 7 p.m. No. They, yes. So they the double overtime screwed up everything. I think they planned 7 p.m. would be after the second period of the scheduled main game. But when it went to double overtime, it screwed up everything. So, I mean, like everybody had a few beers and immediately were cut off. All these main fans that came for their game couldn't get any beer. It was brutal. It, it, it brought the energy of the whole place down. And I blame that as the real reason Maine didn't win. But whoever set that up, you're in the minds. He's only buying the permit till 7 p.m. Mindsies. Robert Oliver Carlson in the chat says huge fumble. That's exactly what you would say. That's a huge fumble. That is Mindsies. Uh, how do you do? I was just at the NCAA basketball thing here, and it's all day basketball down at the rink, and they're reloading booze like mad. And people are there all day boozing, watching sports, boozing, watching sports. And I never heard of this. Unacceptable. <laughs> Unacceptable. At one point, Why? I'm like, wait, do we leave and go watch it in the bar so we can drink? <laughs> My, oh, yeah, you got, yeah, you might have to do that. Just watch it on TV at that point. You got to leave yeah, the rink. What a Mindsies move. That's a Mindsies move. My Mindsies is um, RA and his travel <laughs> regiment. He he sent a picture of a, to the group chat with us. There it is. He's ready to roll. A match made it's in just, heaven. I mean, and he's got like, this is a adult human being, an adult human being. And RA knows you, 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 you make money. Like you're, you're doing good. Like you're RA and you're, and you're packing goldfish in a Ziploc bag. They don't have bags of goldfish at the airport that you can buy. They don't have this kind of stuff. You got a grease ball bag. I, I guarantee too. He scoops his hand in and plows them in there. So when you, when he asks you if you want one, he's yeah. been, he, right well and it's Is the same not... bag he uses for his other stuff that's what's probably <laughs> hidden inside all those goldfish his little stash his oh, all little there. sticks and stems and like yeah. buds and everything right. yeah the guy's an animal the guy's an animal so goldfish ziploc bag to the minesies mm -hmm. on travel days if you're sitting next to someone on the plane they pull out a goldfish <laughs> bag and a giant ziploc with goldfish dust flying out all over the place oh my god come on it's like taking your shoes off on the flight I don't know. All right. Gre Mind Shout you. out to Gretzky's basement there in yeah. that picture, though. Love Gretzky's it. all over our show today. No, the great he's unbelievable. one. 99. He's unbelievable. What's your show, Merle? You got one? Show, show. Hey, uh, donor. Our our original guy who gave us the first tour on Chicklets University. He played the first game for Arizona State. He gets called up to the Coyotes, scores two goals in his first game. Everybody saw the clips. Shane there, the uncle ripping off the shirt. I'm oh, just he was upset. jacked. Jacked. I, I wish they, they call him up one game sooner. It would have been ice con. It would have made yeah. it even more electric there. But yeah, shout out to, to young donor. Congrats. I'm excited to watch him because I got to meet him at Arizona State. And uh it, it's really something. I think did he have two assists again last night? Yeah, so two it, points again. Uh, like one of few players in the NHL to in his first two games have multi-point games as a rookie or something his call up. Yeah. So congrats to him. I mean, that's gotta be just a thrill. It was cool to see. Cause it's, it's not just the kid getting that experience. It's mm -hmm. the whole family that's been along for the ride and the ups and downs and hardships and good stuff and good times. And that was a good time. Congrats to 
uh, Josh, but the entire Doan family. That's mm-hmm. just an incredible thing. In the mullet, ripping tarps off in the booth. The family's going nuts. Right. Pretty cool. And Biz called it, too. Biz called he'd he get did. a goal. So Biz Tradamus. Yeah, he was on the scene. Maybe I got to just call him and get some winners from him today. Yeah, you should. You should. Um, I got two. I'm going to do two uh, shows. First of all, uh, if we could get up the St. Louis charity game, it's a St. Louis alumni against the NHL. Uh, alumni association game there's going to be stars celebrities there it is a week out so it's next friday is the game uh it's at the centene center in st louis um and i know they had kelly chase on the on the mothership pod and he he kind of pumped this game up but i'll give it another pump so if you're in that area or you're looking to go and support uh, a lot of it's going back towards cancer research and cancer hospitals uh, in the area, it's it's an awesome thing. It, Garth Brooks will be there. There'll be celebrities there as coaches and and just legendary hockey players will be kicking around there as well. I think Brett Hall is going to be there. Is Gretz going to be there too? Did he say Gretz? I could be I'm off be on this, but I wouldn't be surprised if he is. Just a great thing and, and a great initiative in support of that. Uh, so check that out. My second show is Cruiser. Oh. Watch your step. Get in here. I got Cruiser. Oh, he's coming here. on. He's coming in. He goes. Here's Cruiser. Here he oh, is. Get in here. Of this guy. What's yep. going on? Here he is. Say hi to the chat. Hey, what's up, chat? <laughs> chat, baby. <laughs> is he on there? Yeah, on there. Yeah, he'll be in nah, there. Sings Sings he's in vacation. Cancun. You let him out of the so, basement. Cruz has nationals in Detroit starting next week. Their Whoa. team uh, won their mid-am tournament to go to nationals. So shout out to the Penn's Elite and his little crew. He got a mullet cutting his hair the other day. Oh, let's uh, see by it. Ziggy, our hairdresser. Show us the little side profile. Oh. It's, he's got, he, he can't see it really good, yeah, but he's got the sides tight. He's, it's a tight mully. It's get a tight, lines stylish in there. Like, I, I used to get my number put in there. It says get lines or numbers put in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, want, I want a little lines. Yeah, a little, yeah. little bullet burns, they call it, right? Yeah. Like a little, <laughs> little lightning bolt. Maybe there get the go. eyebrow done up like... Uh, mm-hmm. like uh, vanilla ice or something <laughs> so good luck to the boys that's the show go get them cruiser look at this so lean in a little more lean in a little more there's a pen logo oh, lean this all in. i see is this pen logo boom Ooh, number 20, 20 merles go. he's he's rocking the number there you go. Boy, right? i'll be watching i'll be watching all good right. luck to all those kids going to nationals all yep. these teams good all these teams national week coming up so Good job, Cruiser. Thanks for popping yeah. in. I wanted we'll to give take home a title. Then you know the real penguins won't take home a title this year. And G's is uh advisor, obviously. G's yeah. is advisor. So we'll see how he does this weekend. I'll have to We're report working back on to... Penn State, buddy. We'll We're working get it on done. Penn State. We'll get it done. <laughs> I'm working on North Dakota for him too. North we, we Dakota too, Cruiser. Work. He's got Ooh. some things in the works. G's just working the circuit. What an advisor. Unbelievable. Chicklet's oh, advisory. Hair, baby. You got to get the stash going though, yeah, back if you're stash. advisor. I have yeah, to we'll get, get the, the stash, stash going. When you're beating on tables and hey, get my kid a contract or a or a scholarship. I gotta got, listen Mark? to Vinny Wilson in the chat. He said El Prez and all the stoolies for to the show for raising all the money they did. Oh so yeah. We'll, we'll add that into the show. And we'll have we'll that. Of course, we have our uh uh, FDNY NYPD game coming up. Coming um, up you know, keep track of that with us. We'll be there broadcasting that game. It was a gong show last year. These guys <laughs> laid on the line. It was insane. Oh, insane. It was insane. Merles was down in the locker rooms yeah. doing interviews. We had intermissions, yep. Biz and Wit calling the game. Um, it was it was it was electric. So that's coming up too in honor of that as well. Uh, great job by Prez and Barstool for what they what they did there in that initiative. Just a brutal story, but um, raising some money and doing some good things as always. Um, is that it? Was that it for us, Merles? I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm going to wish everyone happy Easter. I'm going over to Ted's fish fry right now for lunch. I'm going to take my nephews and my daughter, Ted's fish fry. My son's Send name us is a picture. Ted. And Send us a uh, picture oh, I, of that. Oh, this place is the best. It, you know, that was the first place I ever worked was Ted's fish fry. They had an ice cream stand next to one of the branches of it with a baseball batting cage. That was my first ever job when I was 14 or 15. So oh, not that anybody I'm, wanted to know about that, that, but that's where I'm headed. I'm going to get that. And then I'm going to get right in front of the TV for BC. Yeah. Happy Easter to everyone. Is your, is your, is, do they serve it on a regular bun with the filet of fish? Like the giant filet, like hanging out the ends, like huge. Yes. Yeah. Huge. Hot like dog you bun. Cut it off. And it's huge. And then I, on days like today, or I, sometimes they know I was a former employee they give you half of another one and they put it on top. So then the move is you got to get the side of tartar yep. to dip dip the extra pieces in. 
So when you have the yeah. original one, you, you cut off the side, dip, cut off the other side, dip, yeah. and then and then you go the full hot dog style. Okay. I was going to ask you how you yeah. do it if you eat it off the ends, if you eat the exterior of the fish yeah. hanging out. But awesome. you do the cutoff yeah. move. That's a veteran move of a guy that yeah. worked there. <laughs> Gets the employee discount. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, quick news too. Merle's will yeah. give a shout out. Uh, the Leafs extended uh, Simon Benoit three-year deal, 1.35. Happened before the show kind of hard-nosed defenseman that's come on for the Leafs, three-year extension for him. Uh, and this uh, Fedotov that we talked about, obviously unveiled mm -hmm. today here with the Flyers, has come over. That's a crazy story, too, in itself. But yeah. they get this goaltender. He's 27 years old, so we'll see what happens there uh, as the Flyers yeah, kind of... Yeah, sorry. I sorry. I see this guy, SDP, Doug's Fish Fry and Skinny Atlas, another legendary fish fry. Skinny that's, Atlas? Skinny Atlas. That's one of the Finger Lakes. Conley oh, used yeah, to have a yeah. house out there. And that that's another legendary fish fry. I got to go fish fry today yeah. then too, Merles. Yeah. I got to do it. Um, Hit up the is fish fries. Is that big fries. down there? Is that big? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's huge here. Oh, yeah. The lineups right. are insane, though. That's the only thing that EBR. prevents me. EBR. Everybody's getting fish today, <laughs> boys. <Yeah. laughs> Everyone's yeah. eating fish today. <laughs> Giant fish fry. Fill your boots. Yeah. Go get it. Cut it off. Dip it in the tartar. <laughs> love the chat. I love the interview. Thank you for that interview. Mm -hmm. Um awesome interview that we had uh today from north dakota from uh, if you haven't gone and checked it out chl playoffs kicked off last night sask two blades lost to pa there's more games starting tonight on the road to saginaw for the memorial cup keep track of that um obviously keep more of a track on the western hockey league the only league that matters but that is <laughs> happening <laughs> we, <laughs> we that matters. good western Dylan, boy good western boy right there thank you to the chat I hope everyone has a happy Easter from Merle's, myself, Grinelli, Apuzo, and the Chicklets crew. Happy Easter. Have a great weekend. Shout out to everyone for joining us. We'll see you next week.